This is Bombix Mori, this is the Chinese silkworm, and it's the animal responsible for all of the world's major silk productions, from our suits to our ties to our bed sheets. My name's Chris Holland, and I'm part of a team from the Oxford Silk Group in Oxford University, led by Professor Volrath, and we're here at the double beam line at the ESRF, alongside our little friend here, which is the Chinese silkworm, Bombix Mori, and we're trying to understand how this creature can produce one of nature's strongest and toughest fibres. Silk is a fantastic material. Not only is it produced at room temperatures using just water as a solvent, it also far outperforms the mechanical properties of many of our industrial polymers. And so if we can understand how nature makes one of its toughest materials, we can start to improve our own fibres. One of the unique things that we have here at the ESRF is uh, access to top world-class instrumentation and support. And so using a uh, double beamline here, we're able to get uh, very, very good uh, access to experimental tools and techniques that will able to, to recreate the type of shearing, the type of spinning that occurs within the spider and silkworm to give us this insight into our material. The reason why we use the ESRF is because it's able to provide both the uh, quality and the quantity of uh, light that we need to resolve the structures that we're looking at. Because the silk molecules are so small, these silk proteins are so small, we need uh, x-rays in order to see certain structural changes because these are things that can't be seen with normal microscopes. So at the moment you'll see it's making very small what we call figure of eight movements, which is exactly the kind of movements that it makes when it constructs its silk cocoon in order to turn from a caterpillar into a moth. So there's already been some fantastic experiments done at the ESRF about 10 years ago looking at how silk is spun and actually reeling silk directly from the spider to look at how changing the speed at which the silk is spun changes the orientation of the molecules in the fibre. Now we're actually going further upstream at this point, so we're looking at how silk is transformed inside the animal, so how it goes from this stored gel into the final solid fibre at the moment. If we can start to learn the tools and techniques that nature uses to produce its materials, we can drastically reduce our carbon footprint and our energy imprint on the world, because at the moment, in order to make fibres that are nearly but not quite as good as nature, we use very, very polluting chemicals, very, very high temperatures and pressures, and we require oil. Now, if we can do it like the spider and silkworm, all we would really need is flies and leaves. At the moment there are already plenty of technologies out there that are using this kind of cutting edge research that we are applying, understanding how silk is spun and understanding how silk proteins can be used for a whole range of different applications. One of the key things to realise is that silk doesn't have to be a fibre. One of the reasons why silk is so impressive is because the structures down on the nanometre level give it that amazing strength and toughness. And so if you can unspin silk, it, you can turn it into a whole range of different materials, from foams, films, powders, the whole lot. One of the main areas in which that's used at the moment is in medicine, where people are making artificial bones, cartilage, tendons, neural guides, the whole remit of implantable biomedical devices using silk. Mm -hmm.